I thought it would be a good idea to show you the integration of an A-channel interface, like this DGO3 or any other A-channel interface, with the D-Box. First, let's look at a diagram. You'll see the different input sources, two analog, two digital, headphone outputs, two speaker outputs. What we're going to do now is concentrate on the right side of the interface, the eight channels of D2A conversion into the sum input of the D-Box, the output of the D-Box back into the DAW, and then the output of the DAW back into the D-Box via the digital output for monitoring. Check it out. It's always better to look at the back of things. You will need a cable like this one, D-Sub on one side, eight TRS on the other side. So, you connect the eight output of your interface, like this, and then the D-Sub goes into the sum input of the D-Box. So this is very obvious. Eight outputs go into the D-Box. Next, you're going to need a cable like this. Two XLRs for the output of the sum of the D-Box and two TRS to go back into your interface. Your interface is most likely going to take TRS. Maybe your interface takes XLRs. Then you'll need an XLR to XLR cable. So here we go. Just these two guys. Sum output. One, two. Here on the DGO3, I like to go back onto seven and eight input. And I like to make sure that my input is at plus four. There you go. So as a summary, so far we have eight channels coming out of the DGO3 into the sum input of the D-Box. The audio is being summed inside the D-Box. The sum output is stereo and is coming out, getting back into the DGO3. The last thing we need is this cable, an RCA to XLR mail. What's that for? If you remember, we've been out of the DGO3, into the D-Box, out of the D-Box, back into the DGO3. Now I need to monitor that last link. To do so, I'm going to take the digital output of the DGO3 and feed it into the digital the input of the D-Box. And now I have the full round trip set up. It's really very simple. Everything's connected. All that is left to do is obviously power and then a Firewire cable from the DGO3 to my computer. And then I'm going to show you a session. Back to the front of the rig. This is my traveling rig, in this case with my laptop. I have a session that I'm going to show you in detail how I set up to work with the D-Box. Right now, all my tracks are assigned to no output. I'm going to set it up in front of you. First thing I want to do is assign all the drums to output 1, 2. So I'll do it this way. There you go. You'll notice that my bass drum is bust to this aux here, and that aux is sent to output 1, 2. So I have all my drums that way. If you're wondering why the overheads are in mono, it's because I like it that way on this song. It actually sounded better, more powerful and punchier. I think the claps should go in the same stem. Here you go. The bass I'm going to send to output 7, which is connected to one of the two mono inputs of the D-Box. And the vocal I'm going to send to output 8, which is connected to the other mono input of the D-Box. Why do I do that? Because say I want to insert something analog um, onto the vocal or the bass, which are my two main things in this track. Well, um, I can do it because they are separated in mono and I have a pan for them on the D-Box. So in case I want to do a cute trick with the pan. Organ and Whirly, I'm going to send to output 3-4. Banjo, violin, and guitar are going to go to output 5-6, as well as my effects. Right here. There you go. So that's how I chose to assign my instruments from the DAW into the D-Box. The D-Box is going to sum the signal, and I'm going to feed that back into the DAW to these two tracks. Let me show you. If you remember, we connected the sum output of the D-Box to input 7-8 of the DG003. Here's input 7-8. And I'm going to an aux so I can have a few effects. An EQ here, uh, minus 1 dB at 134 Hz, plus 1 dB at 46 Hz, a little bit of compression, and a little bit of limiting, 0.25 dB of limiting, definitely not going to change the face of the world. And then I print that aux onto a track. And this track is monitored to my mains, which is the digital output of the DG03. If you remember, it goes back into the DAW input of the D-Box. Side note, why do I go to an aux? Because in Pro Tools, effects are pre-recording. So if I want to print my effects, I have to go through an aux and then to a track. So if I summarize from left to right, I have all my separate instrument tracks here, going to discrete stems output from 1 to 8. And then I have the return from input 7, 8, going to this aux and the effects. And I'm printing that aux to a track. And I'm monitoring that track, which is my mix, through the D-Box high-quality converters. 
Everything is connected, everything is assigned, the round trip is set up, we're ready to monitor, let's listen to some music. This is a Will Knox song called Escapade. Don't pity this wretch, I've got no regrets, I only remember how to forget. I'm stubborn as the will of nature's cause, it's the same mistakes so I'll make once more. Let me show you something else that I think is very interesting. If I hit this monitor, the sum, I'm listening to the output of the D box. So post summing, but pre going back into the DAW. If I hit the DAW button, I'm listening to everything post the DAW, including whatever plugins I put here on the final track. So I can compare all analog or right after the digital path. That is very important. Although I'm showing you the D box here with my traveling rig, which is my laptop in a DG003, uh, we also use it with a full-blown TDM ring in our Neve room or we can also use it with an Ensemble or a Fire Studio. It really doesn't matter. What matters is it gives you both summing and monitoring in one box.